In cultivating the tree of vipassana is just like uh, cultivating a little vegetable garden, so to speak. You have to uh, put up the fences so that the vegetables will be safe from attack by pests. Sara will deal in greater detail with this aspect of uh, Vipassana agriculture later on, but for today we'll, that will just hear all. Sukha Nukhita Sara Shankha Yankha Sutta Nugahita refers to the um, cultivating of knowledge, so to speak, or making sure that whatever you learn or hear is well taken care of. And that is equivalent to watering your vegetables in your garden. ชวนนี้ยาบาเลยยังคายังคาบ่นี่เสียดีตัวพี่ชวนนี้ยากูอ้าทุกคนนี่ติ่นเปียดอ้าทุกคนตุ้ยจงเจ็ดดีบ่น
The fourth aspect is called Samatha Nugahita, which refers to the concentration of mind needed to make sure that we are not attacked or assaulted by the hindrances. And this concentration of mind can be achieved with the help of one, effort, and two, accuracy in aim. With perseverance and accuracy in aim, uh, in trying to note every object that arises at its moment of occurrence, Without uh, slipping, uh, this would help to maintain that state of mind which will be free from assault by the hindrances. This is quite similar to the process of um, cultivating a plant where you take preventive measures to make sure that uh, plants are not assaulted by pests and even if they are assaulted by certain pests, we have to apply more drastic measures like pesticides and insecticides and so forth. ตะกะกะมาเตยชุบมาลูกกอยเนี่ยเอ้อดิดิกูซวยทาบาดิดิอาริเตกอกนาเวซุยดาซวยละญีตวยนี่ดิชิชิมะเตตอกกอลูยิน
Um, of these five aspects, the last two are especially relevant to our situation here in this retreat. Um, with concentration of mind, as the mind becomes more and more collected and uh, focused on whatever is happening at any of the six sense doors at its moment of occurrence, then uh, the mind has the opportunity to penetrate deeper and deeper into the true nature of reality. And so, the last two aspects of Samatha Nugahita and Vipassana Nugahita is interdependent on one another and uh, would eventually uh, lead one to a very deep level of understanding. Um, these two aspects can perhaps be equated to uh, what is called improvement felling in the art of uh, cultivating uh, lumber, uh, cultivating trees for lumbering. Uh, it seems that uh, in the art of cultivating forests for lumbering, Improvement selling is a technique that is used to um, make sure that uh, the trees are not grown in too dense an area and, and not too sparse an area and they are grown in such a way that each tree will have sufficient uh, sunlight and nutriment and so forth. Uh, so too, we must apply the same principle to the practice. Right now, we shall be concerned with the third aspect, which is Sakacha Nagahita, the discussion of your experiences with your teacher. In such discussions with a teacher, it is important to bear in mind two things. One is uh, brevity and the second is precision. Today the Sada will attempt to uh, lay out a path for all yogis here present to help them to successfully uh, participate in a discussion with uh, bearing these two important points in mind, gravity and position. The first thing for you to do is to find out how many hours of meditation you're doing. You've got 24 hours per day and you have to first uh, report to your teacher how many hours of sitting you did for that day and how many hours of walking you did. If you are able to be truthful and honest in reporting the total hours of our meditation uh, practice, this will certainly demonstrate that we are very sincere and earnest yogis. It is not necessary to describe each and every sitting in detail. There are some sittings 
which may be similar. And if uh, if you encounter similar experiences in various sittings, then it would just uh, suffice if you could uh, combine all of these experiences together and present them as a general report. It may be useful, or yeah, it may be useful to just keep the suggestion in mind. So I'd also suggest that perhaps you could just pick out the best sitting you had in the morning, and the best sitting you had in the afternoon, and one at night, and to just make a report of these three best sittings. When you start to report on your thing, the most important thing to begin with is your basic object of meditation. Here, the Saito, as the Saito had uh, described last night, the basic object of meditation given is the rise and fall of the abdomen. So when you first, when you come in to reporting your sitting, you should begin with your rising and falling. And, and after describing your experiences, uh, with the rise and fall, you may add in, uh, other experiences you had, for example, with sitting and touching, and so forth. But uh, so I would like to stress the very uh, the uh, very in, the importance of making sure that the basic foundation is well taken care of. And the similar principle is applied to reporting on your walking meditation. Uh, please report experiences which have direct connection to the uh, walking movements. Uh, when you're following the walking movements, if you're, if you're taking the one step or say the three step, uh, three step movement of raising, pushing and placing, you should try to describe each movement and the experiences that uh, you had. With each of these movements. So yeah, was time you see what they come. Chet don't you see what a pure yogi pure chet don't you? Pomu polare, pound little shimate, ballet, bellu lesma. Mean a how to be. Pomu polare, mate, dear. I did to my mother, be with other people. In describing your experiences with any object of meditation, any object of uh, awareness or mindfulness, you should first understand that it is a three-phase process, a three-phase process of reporting. The first phase is to identify what is occurring. The second phase is to report how you note it. And the third phase is to describe what you see, or what you feel, or what you understand, or what was happening when you noted it. So for example, if you're watching, or you're, inter- you're attempting to describe the rising and falling, the first phase is for you to identify the occurrence. You say, okay, the rising occurs. The rising process of the abdomen occurs. The second phase is to note it. Well, I note it as rising. I make a mental note and note it rising. And the third phase is to describe what was happening. As I noted the rising process, uh, this is what I experienced. These are the sensations I felt. This was uh, 
the behavior of those sensations at that time, and so forth. ဥမာပြောမယ်ဆိုလေရှိရင်ဆိုကြပါဆိုလို့မှာနာရီပြရင်ဒါပါလေပေါလာတာတပိုင်းညမောက်မှာရောက်လာတာတပိုင်းကြ
This is not a recitation practice. It is for you, the mental notes are for you to uh, to help you to direct your attention to what's happening so that you can see clearly what's happening there. Well, the same principle is applied to the falling process. So you're describing the falling process, you should have, uh, start to do so in accordance with this three-phase system of reporting. The occurring of the falling process, uh, the noting of it, and thirdly, uh, a description of what sensations are happening during the falling process and other observations. เอ่อเดี๋ยวฟังไปมูกูตะเสซุมาณีเดอะคาเสซุระกูทายามะนีบ่ซีซุระทั่วตะบาซิกูมิ้วซุมผิดตะบาเอ่อเดี๋ยว
ปัญญาเนี่ยพอละปะเนี่ยนิรณะฤทธิ์เนี่ยจ้าละฤทธิ์เนี่ยนานาฤทธิ์เนี่ยสาระตอกเตะขาฤทธิ์เนี่ยพ
his experience in a competent way. The first uh, thing we talked about just now is about the actual task. Is he able to do it or not? Or not? And the second one is whether he is able to to express his experience provided he has been able to follow the object. And the third, the third thing is for him to actually express his experience in a very precise and concise way. ไอ้ว่ามันในบุสุยเสร็จมาไม่ใช่หรอกเสร็จเนี่ยยอกเลยเสร็จเนี่ยถั่วเนี่ยตามว่าผมสุรจีกูเรียกว่าเอ่อข